Let's talk Giants. I you know, I don't want to get too deep into the week seven loss with the Cardinals. It was by far the most disappointing loss of the season. Um, I think may- maybe some people might have pointed to the Bills loss uh, was disappointing because um, bit, I mean, did anyone know the Bills are going to be six and one now and, and you know, looking like they might um, be a threat to the Patriots? You know, no. At the time, it was like, oh, Josh Allen. We knew they had a, a top defense, but we didn't think that their offense would be able to pull it together. That our defense would look that bad. And uh, our defense looked bad in this game. You know, I don't know how you look so good against the Patriots, and maybe that's just the Patriot way. You know, the offense lulls you into thinking that you have the upper hand, and then they just they they pick you apart. Death by a thousand cuts. I mean, it's, it's not just a Taylor Swift song. You know, they, they did it to the Jets uh, on Monday night. Hard to get a read on where the Giants' defense is right now. You know, they come out super flat in the first half. You give up, uh, you know, 14, 17 points right off the bat. We're in a deep hole. And so, of course, Shermer panics to a certain degree and doesn't hand the ball to, to Barkley when he should. He hands it to Barkley on predictable downs where they, the defense knows you're going to hand it off to Barkley and then doesn't hand it off to him when it would serve you right. You know, the keys of the game going into it were contain Kyler Murray, protect the ball, and run the ball. We didn't run the ball. I mean, 18 carries for 60-some-odd yards for Barkley. He had a big run uh, called back because of a Hernandez holding call, which the holding penalties were just brutal you know, killed a, a couple drives that could have gotten those points. Protect the ball. Daniel Jones didn't do it. You know, he had the one pick, um, which was uh, pretty ugly, throwing into double coverage to Golden Tate. And then he had a couple others that almost could have been picked again. You know, reminiscent of Eli early in his career. You know, Eli, first half of his career, was willing to make the th- make some dangerous throws that had bigger up you know upsides and i think daniel jones is in that that mode right now where he's like i'm willing to take the chance and he's gotten burned sometimes and sometimes it comes out like the rhett ellison throw i don't know that eli manning makes that throw to rhett ellison you know he had a guy tailing him and uh safety over the top and you really had to make a perfect throw for that to work and daniel made a perfect throw i of course i would love to have him just to look off of ellison to the left and he had i think barkley or something down the seam He had a guy wide open down the seam on the left and with no safety over the top and no one covering him. And it's like, I would love for him to like check off of that and look, see that. But the fact that he can make that kind of throw is what we love about him. So, but it's not the interceptions that are killing us right now for the most part. I mean, the one interception led to points because it was in Giants territory and that sucks, but it's the fumbles. You know, just protect the ball, dude, especially like on the front side. People say, oh, it was a front side hit from Chandler Jones that where he stripped it and caused a fumble. And then he should be able to see that. And it's like, you know, I mean, obviously you know, I'm not playing football, my friend, because if you have, you know, if you, even though you're facing your body's facing that way, your head's not facing that way. So you need to have like a tremendous peripheral vision to see a guy coming, especially a guy like Chandler Jones, who's fast as fuck and hits like a ton of bricks. So this is the fumbles, dude. Hold on to the ball. If you're going to take a sack, just take the sack and don't lose the ball. He just, he fumbled away two. He fumbled three times, lost two. And, and they, and each time it hurt us. So, you know, I mean, the, where does the defense stand now? Looks the decent about against the Pats and then kind of came out on a flat start in the first half. And then we're put in really tough positions, you know, um, especially, I mean, that last field goal, that's, that's not on them. I mean, the, the fact that they were able to just hold it to a field goal is amazing, you know, and then the special teams, you know, getting a blocked punt for a touchdown, amazing. And then that uh, that shift that they had that caused a false start and kicked the Cardinals out of uh, field goal range was a genius. But then you had Rosas miss the field goal, you know. It's like Rosas hits that field goal. We're tied, possibly going overtime. And that last drive at the end of the first half, that's a that's an opportunity to get points. Evan Ingram drops a fucking pass down the right sideline. And I, I've spoken very highly of Evan Ingram. And I said he's advanced, he's evolved, he's better now. And then he he felt like he kind of regressed. We we they like all regressed to 2017. Rosas missing field goals. Ingram dropping balls. Ingram catches the ball. That's a field goal. And we're up 27-24. And who knows, you know, we get the win. And it's an ugly win, but it's a win. It's the little things. I cannot believe they allowed Chase Edmonds to run for what they did. You know, three 20-plus yard touchdowns is is insane to me. And and you look at the, and I try to look at the tape, I guess you'd say. And we have, we have Jabril Peppers lining up as a linebacker next to Alec Olgood.
and he is slightly undersized for a linebacker, 6'1", 220. 